Today we're going to speak about the part of the watchword, be faithful in prayer. I just returned from Namibia where I visited my grandchildren. At the end of every day, we would all come together and then we would read a Bible story and after that, each one of us would pray. Oh, I love it. Listening to those three boys, two, four and seven, praying. Lord Jesus, please bless mommy and daddy and Joey. And thank you for Opa visiting us. And then Ray Daniel would shout at the top of his voice, In the name of Jesus, Amen. <laughs> but my highlight every day was listening to Reuben, only four years old, praying the Lord's Prayer. One night, I think he thanked the Lord for our toothbrushes instead of our daily food. But each one of us know when we've experienced praying together with a family that it is special. It's amazing and it's a privilege. No wonder that our Father insists that we must be faithful in prayer. All over the scripture we read about praying. One of the most favorite verses I have about praying is in Psalm 107 verse 28 to 30. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble and He brought them out of their distress. He stilled the storm with a whisper. The waves of the sea were hushed. They were glad when it grew calm and He guided them to their desired haven. Matthew speaks to us in Matthew 7 verse 7 and He said, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened for you. In James, we read that we must pray in faith. James say, when one is sick, call on the elders of the church and let them come and pray and anoint you with oil in the name of the Lord and the sick will be healed. In Philippians 4, Paul says to us, be anxious about nothing, but in everything through prayer, supplication and thanksgiving. Make your requests known to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guide your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Paul, while he was in chains in a Roman jail, wrote to the Colossian church and he said to them, continue steadfast in prayer, being watchful to do it with thanksgiving. In Acts, we read that prayer was a hallmark of the early church. Not only did they pray, but they prayed together constantly in one accord. Yes, prayer right from the beginning. And all of us know how special it is when people pray for us by name. Just see that picture of a child tucked into bed and a mom or a dad comes and they take their hand and they say, Lord Jesus, bless him tonight. Let him sleep peacefully. Sometimes I go to Carolyn and I say to Carolyn, it feels like I'm at the end of the road. I need you to pray for me. Then Carolyn will take my hand and she will pray for me. It's special. It's powerful and it's beautiful. But today I want to speak to you about praying faithfully for our children in Africa. Just imagine that you are the only person on this whole planet praying for a specific child in Africa. Hence at work can't pray for all the children by name anymore. There are more than 7,000 already. We need people that know these children by name, that know these grandmothers, 
and that believe in the power of prayer, that believe that prayer can change lives. Maybe you asked me this morning, but George, how do I do that? I want to tell you how I do that. I've got a book that I carry with me wherever I go every day. And in this book, I just made a list of about 10 children and grandmothers who are on my heart this year. So when I get up early in the morning and I have my quiet time, or when I go for a, a long drive in my car, or when I go for a run, pick some of these names and I pray for them specifically. I think about them. I pray for them on name. I ask for God to be with them today. Sometimes early in the morning I will pray for Nolwazi. And as I pray for her, I will look at my watch and I will think she's actually busy walking to school right now. Nine years old, walking for two and a half hours to school. Then I will say, Lord, right now Nawazi is walking to school. I'm praying for her. Protect her. Give her the strength. May a teacher be kind to her today. Since I started focusing, praying for children and grandmothers by name, constantly, faithfully, I want to tell you, it changed my life. My whole life changed as I realized the incredible investment that I'm busy making. This morning, I could send an SMS to her, one of our girls had just turned 18, and I could say to her, I'm praying for you by name. Today you turn 18. You're a woman, a woman of God. Remember you are special, and God has created somebody special for you. Wait for him. Friends, it doesn't take much. It takes some of your time, some commitment. You can change the lives of thousands. This year, will you join me to be faithful in prayer for our children? Thank you for joining us. www.handsatwork.org